Hi. Oh my God. I feel like I'm talking to thin air, to nobody. Um, I've never done this before and it's just starting. Hi, I see people writing things. Uh, I decided to just sit in a room and talk to you because the idea of going out and doing something or like, shit, I see people like playing instruments or guitars or things while they do it and I was totally overwhelmed by the idea because this, <laughs> this is all new to me. Um, somebody was asking me already questions. You were posting questions on my lead up to having this talk and um, before I start answering them, I have a question for you guys that I figured you could maybe help me with, which is some fans were saying they can't make it and they really wanted to see it. And I know there's a way that you can like capture some of this, that I can record it from my end. Do any of you know how to do that? Because <laughs> I sure as hell don't know how to do that. So if you could tell me, that would be great. And then I will, um, I will do that. I'm on landscape view and your guys' comments are all in the other way. And I don't know why it doesn't flip. Maybe if I need to flip my phone. Let's see. There, now I can read them. Uh, what's my favorite movie? Um, there's too many to pick from, but I love The Fountain by Darren Aronofsky with Hugh Jackman that was booed out of the Toronto Film Festival that for some reason people love to hate, but I absolutely love it. Oh, hi. You were trying to record it on your computer. Thank you for the other fans who can't make it. I know there are super elves that can't make it, but I know I can do it. How do I do it? Somebody tell me how I do it. Uh, will there be an Ant-Man and the Wasp 3? Well, that'll depend on you guys. If you show up at the theaters and you make us some money, then there will be. But if not, then definitely no. Somebody was asking me, um, uh, do you think that Kate was pregnant with Jack's baby when she left the island? They said, please say yes, because that's what I think was the case. I totally do. Of course she was. She was totally pregnant with Jack's baby. Do I miss Lost? No, I don't. I loved being a part of it. I'm proud to have been a part of it. But God, it was so much work. And it just, you know, playing somebody who is terrified and emotional and in angst and fear and horror and shame and everything day in and day out for 12 hours a day. God, that's painful. Uh, I'm not the kind of actor who went to acting school, so I don't have a ton of tricks up my sleeve. I don't really have this like bag of tools I can pull from. I just have to feel it. I just have to go there and live it and feel it. And so for me, Lost was pretty torturous. Um, six years of like 12, 14 hours a day, just always being in the most horrible emotional places. Um, you might notice that the first thing I did after that was Real Steel, where I got to just hold a cup of coffee and talk to a very beautiful man, namely Hugh Jackman. Um, and it was because I just couldn't, I couldn't do any more screaming and running and crying and I was spent. Uh, what do you use on your face? Super glowy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm a firm believer that drinking lots of water and get, getting lots of sleep is the best thing you can do for your skin and that it's the best way you can go. But also, and this is like a big part of it, I never put, not even when I'm on the, you know, the red carpet or in a photo shoot, like I don't put foundation or makeup on this part of my face. I don't cover it because then you wouldn't see my freckles and I'm proud of my freckles. Um, so what you see is actual skin. You know, I don't have any foundation on and I think real skin is prettier than foundation. So that's why it glows. Oh, hi, Peyton. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> it's so weird when you realize people you actually know and are friends with are watching something like this. Wait. Oh, do you miss the Hobbit set or the Hobbit actors or characters? Um, yeah, I really do. I loved being in New Zealand. I loved the people. Um, I always joked about the fact that it was just a big bunch of Commonwealthers because most of us were either English, Irish, Scottish, or in my case, Canadian. And when I'm on American film sets, they have terrible tea. They have no idea how to serve tea. They only have really good coffee. And on The Hobbit, everyone were tea drinkers. And, well, of course, whiskey drinkers, but... We don't need to talk about that part of the job. Um, so I always got 
a really good tea on that set, and that's hard to find in this country. There's somebody else who asked me, what did they ask me at the beginning? And I thought, oh, I could answer that. It's gone now. New Zealand or Hawaii? New Zealand. Sorry. Uh, for those of you who love Hawaii, um, I love New Zealand. I just, I love, love, loved it. It was so kind of unjaded and it felt like England or America or Canada back in the 1950s when things were more innocent and community still was paramount to life and where, um, I don't know, I guess integrity and character and kind of being of the earth and being connected to it and hardworking that kind of stuff is still so hugely important. And I, I'm sure probably, like, if, if I go and hang out in middle America or, you know, somewhere in Kansas or go to Alberta in Canada, it's probably still a, a lot more like that also. But, of course, here I spend a lot of time in cities, and there just seems to be a lot of um, that kind of idealism and innocence lost and a lot of cynicism. And um, I love that about New Zealand. It's got this really innocent spirit. And Peter Jackson, Jackson is like the embodiment of that. He is absolutely uh, the embodiment of idealism and, and kindness and innocence. And he took very, very good care of me. Who, good care of me. Who is your favorite Marvel character? Um, Ant-Man. I'm not just saying that. I, he, re he really, really is. I was a huge Paul Rudd fan before joining the Marvel Universe. And that's one of the reasons I joined the Marvel Universe was because, um, you know, I, I hadn't really set out like, oh, one of my career goals is I want to play a superhero in a superhero movie. That wasn't on my wish list. But when Marvel approached me, um, they already had Edgar Wright and Paul Rudd on board. And I just thought that sounded like the most zany and fantastic idea for a superhero movie and was utterly ridiculous and outside of the box. And um, I was a huge Paul Rudd fan and a huge Edgar Wright fan. And um, so, yeah, Ant-Man's way up there for me. He's sweet and lovable and hilarious and also her heroic. Um, the moment at the end of Ant-Man where Anthony gets shot and Ant-Man says, oh, you're going to pay for that. I fell in love with Ant Man, um, but I also love Spider Man. I've always loved Spider Man. When I was younger, uh, Wonder Woman and Spider Man were my top superhero characters, um, and I kind of think the Hulk is fantastic. I'm a huge Mark Ruffalo fan. I haven't seen um, Black Panther yet. I'm dying to see it. I know it's out in theaters now, and they won't reach it. Won't reach me for forever, um, but. God, I want to see it. I think I'm going to love it. It might become one of my favorite Marvel movies. What's your favorite book from the ones that are behind you? Oh, that's going to be hard. What's my favorite? Oh, A Fraction of the Whole. And for those of you who have been following me for a really long time, like when I first showed up on social media 10 years behind everyone else, because it took me forever to agree to join the real world. Um, I did a, like a book club discussion about a fraction of the whole, and I think it might have been my first one. So I have this wonderful like experience or memory of it, and I, um, and I love it. I love that book. It was one of my favorite books, and the fans really responded to it, and we had this great discussion about it, and yeah, it was great. How was your experience playing the Wasp? Love you. Like, um, it was so challenging, um, truly and really. It was one of the most challenging roles I've played in a film. And there were so many reasons for that. And one of them was the pressure I put on myself. Um, one of them was because I was playing this character that you already met and had a relationship with from the first film. But she went through this hugely transformative emotional journey in the first film and became a new person. And because of that, it was a challenge for me to try to play her in a way that you would recognize that this is the same person. This is Hope Van Dyne from the first film, but she's very, very uh, transformed and that she's grown a lot. And, you know, her, 
her she looks different and and she's softened and she's more content and um in the first film she was the opposite of so many of you know those things she was hard and she was cold and she was um troubled and and so that was a big challenge for me and then also just playing a character where I'm only a small fraction of it I'm such a control freak I I have an opinion about everything and I like to have my hands in everything and really control everything and um I had to really do a trust fall with Marvel and with Peyton Reed um, and just say, okay, I know you guys are going to really be responsible to make this character when she's small. And you're going to, you know, I'm going to be working with a stunt double who's going to do a lot of her more fantastical stunts because, um, uh, frankly, I'm not an Olympian or a, gymna a national gymnast the way she is. And... Um, so I felt like in the end, I was really only responsible for a fraction of who she was or a portion of who she was. And that was hard for me to get used to. It was hard for me to share. I don't share well with other kids, apparently. <laughs> uh, I can't understand that because it's not in my language. Where from? I hate you. Oh, I love you. Um, what did I eat for breakfast this morning? Oh, God, it was the weirdest thing. I eat weird things because I'm lazy about food. I really only care about getting my belly full. I'm not really that into food. And so I go into the fridge and I grab what there is. And I generally speaking, either mix it up in a fry pan or a bowl and eat it. So this morning it was a cabbage, a cabbage snow pea or a snap pea salad mixed with coleslaw mixed with uh, egg. It was weird. Um, and sounds really disgusting, I'm sure. It wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't awful. But it filled my belly, and that's all I really care about. Um, eating is not, is not a thing for me. What else? Can I say something in Spanish or Italian? Mm, I don't, not very much. I can say a few words in Spanish, but I'm trying my, I'm of course blanking at the pressure. Um... <laughs> I'm not even going to embarrass myself. En français, je peux parler en français. I could do that. I could have a conversation with you in French, but only a fraction of you would understand what I'm saying. What about Elizabeth Mitchell? Talk about Elizabeth Mitchell. Uh, she's pretty easy to talk about. As some of you already know, I'm deeply and madly in love with Elizabeth Mitchell, who played Juliet on Lost. Um... She's my very good friend. She's such a soulful person, a real person who's not caught up in the Hollywood bullshit and really has her priorities straight and is really, really smart. We need hope with Colson. Oh God, I don't know who Colson is. I don't watch TV. I'm way too busy. What about Jennifer Lawrence? I've never met her, but I think she seems pretty cool from the outside. Um, answer of questions, please. I think I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm getting to as many of them as I can. I'm waiting for a good one, guys. You still haven't told me how I can record this. I don't know. If I just start pressing buttons, what'll happen? Um, what's this do? Oh, wow. I can put things on my face? What would you say to a person who wants to be an actor? I would say take Helen Mirren's masterclass online right now. I've never taken it, but I really want to. I saw the commercial for it recently, and I was like, oh, I need to take that class because I need to learn how to be an actor, and I bet you she's got some stuff to say. I think she would be an incredible teacher. Um, that's it. Well, you know, and also... Um, just, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You save the recording when you're done. You're always there for me. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. What would I, what my advice? Um, you know, one of the hardest things to do in this profession, I think, is um, to just stay true to yourself and be you. It's so easy to get pulled in a hundred different directions and... I came into this industry at 24 years old, so I wasn't a kid. And I had a really strong idea of who I was. You know, I felt pretty clear on who I was. And 
God, it's so easy to feel like you can get lost in it all or that somewhere along the way you lose yourself or you're not being true to yourself anymore or you kind of feel like, well, wait, who am I? I'm, I'm getting lost. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges as an actor is to hang on to yourself and know yourself and be true to yourself. So, yeah, that would be my thing. Where am I from? I'm from Canada. I'm Canadian. Mostly the West Coast from Alberta and British Columbia. I went to five different elementary schools, which I guess explains how I became an actor. And, um, yeah, I went. I moved around a lot. So I'm not really from any one specific town or city, but I'm Canadian. I'm proud of it and love it. And I have two beautiful little Canadian-American children who I'm proud of and love, which has really... Um, endeared me to this country in a big way. When did you know you wanted to be an actress? Hmm. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Every day, all the time. I'm always trying to figure that out. I do a film and then I reevaluate. Is this what I want to do? Is this, is this the profession for me? Am I happy doing this? Is this fulfilling me? Does this make me feel good? Um, and every time I kind of come back to these like, well, kind of, I don't know, yeah, maybe. Well, it's a pretty great job and I'm going to stick with it for now, but who knows in the future. And, you know, so I don't know. I never really, it never really came to me like that. Like I never had a revelation that, oh, an actor, that's the job for me. That's what I want to do. Um, but I kind of stumbled into it, um, which is really unfair in so many ways because there are people who work so hard to be an actor or an actress and are so passionate about it. But, you know, the world or the universe or God or fate or whatever it is that we all collectively are moved by, it has a funny way of, of taking us places we didn't expect we'd go. And that's kind of what happened with me, with acting. And, yeah, it's the boss. <laughs> Hi. Are you dating anyone? Dating anyone? Um... Well, yeah, uh, my baby daddy, the the man who is the father of my two children, is my boyfriend, and I dig him, and he's pretty groovy. I love Real Steel also. I have to say that that might still be today, to this date, uh, the best experience I had filming anything. Um, Hugh Jackman lives up to every... Uh, rumor you've heard about how incredible he is, uh, what a leader he is on set, what a handsome, chivalrous, intelligent, kind, lovely, smart, super, super talented man he is. I learned a lot from working with him, and I loved working with Sean Levy, who uh, you guys might know from the Night at the Museum films or from uh, Stranger Things, which is a TV show that he created. Um, God, even... Back then when we were filming Real Steel, I felt so clearly that I was working with somebody really, really special in Sean, and I kept telling him all the time, I want to work with you anytime in the future again. Um, and then, of course, he became this mega producer producing Stranger Things, and I'm really proud of him and super stoked for him because he deserves all the success in the world. Will you appear in Avengers 4? I will appear in Avengers 4. Not very much, so don't get your hopes up. It's not going to be a ton, but I'm in there, and I'm proud to be in there, and I'm stoked to be in there, and I had so much fun on the Avengers 4 film set, because they made it like a party. It was right around uh, Christmas time, and um, it just was like they had this tent set up with Christmas carols and with uh, Christmas lights and music, and so every time we would be on set or walk off of set, we'd walk into this really festive environment, and, you know, I'm surrounded by all these rock stars who are super cool people in real life, and we all got to know each other, and um, Robert Downey Jr. would have us come over to his tent for lunch and we'd all sit down and have a nice lunch together and it's it ended up being what I think a lot of fans imagine it's like on a film set with a bunch of film stars which usually it isn't usually film stars all go to their own trailers and disappear and don't talk to one another and they get on the phone with their wife or their husband or their agent or you know they're the CEO of a company that they're running and they've got something to do during their lunch hour and sometimes it can be a really lonely place to be on a film set but um, Avengers was the polar opposite of that. It was a community and it was fun and people were 
really warm and kind and is your first name French, Evangeline? Uh, I think so, but I've heard it's got a Greek origin. Um, there's poetry that is written with the title Evangeline uh, that's English poetry. And um, I don't know, even my last name, uh, Lily, people say, oh, that's a French Lily. It's a French last name. But I don't think I have any French in my... Um, Genealogy. I'm English, Irish, Canadian, with a bunch of other little bits of stuff speckled in there. But, you know, for the most part, I'm straight. I'm a straight Brit. If you could be a mythical thing other than an elf, what would you be and why? Uh, my three top mythical uh, beings when I was a kid were unicorns, fairies, and elves. I was that little girl. I loved girly stuff, and um, I think I still feel that way. I don't think I'd want to be a unicorn, but I always wanted a pet unicorn. And I think, other than an elf, maybe I would choose a fairy. They're small and cute, kind of like the wasp. Hi. Am I coming to Argentina? Not, no plans in the immediate future, but I do love Argentina. I've been there before. What star sign are you and are you typical of it? Yes, I am typical of it. I'm a Leo. Um, I'm a Leo and I I definitely fit a lot of the Leo characteristics. And I'm, I mean, probably typically of a Leo. I'm quite proud to be a Leo. I love being a Leo. Um, I'd say the only thing that doesn't really fit is I'm not super materialistic. I don't really value luxury. Um, my house is pretty humble. My things are pretty humble. I drive a very old vehicle. Um, I like old things and I like camping and I like simplicity and I like being close to the earth. And, um, so I guess that one doesn't fit. Will you get married with Ant-Man? Um, you have to wait and find out. It's amazing how quickly these things scroll and that you can actually catch anything. Do I believe in God? Wow, what a question. That's an enormous question. I have always, all my life, had a very big and deep and broad faith. Um, I think words were created long after the thing we call God, whatever name we give it, in my mind, in my opinion, and for me, is irrelevant because it existed before words. So I do believe in a power that is unseeable, a force and energy in the world that is a part of us and with us. Um, but I don't know what it needs to be called, whether it's God or the universe or fate or Allah or energy or spirit or... Um, Buddha or, you know, it's just, they're all names, they're all words, and words, to me, they don't mean that much when talking about something that can't be defined by words. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. <laughs> uh, I'm good, how are you? I'm having fun, it's nice. It's weird, because I feel like I'm having a conversation with myself. Are you, I suggest... Mm, Claire or Juliet? Oh, that's pretty hard to choose. I spent a significant part of my last days with both of those women. And, um, and even Sun. I, I don't know. All the women from Lost are dear to my heart and are my favorites, of course. Do I like the Beatles, McCartney or Lennon? Well, for five years, I dated maybe the biggest Beatle fan in the world, and he really gave me an enormous education on the Beatles. And he was a huge Lennon fan. Um, and so I think he kind of biased me towards Lennon and towards Manchester United, of course. The real question is, <laughs> in all capitals, Jack or Sawyer, I'm telling you... I've been doing this for 15 years, and there is not 
one interview I don't think that I've ever done where that doesn't come up or especially not if the question if like if it gets taken to the fans if the fans are allowed to ask questions somebody's gonna ask me Jack or Sawyer and um, 12 years I have bit my tongue and never answered that question and I will carry on doing that to the day I die best question oh Jack always. No, he's a jerk. They're going to start fighting now. Everyone's going to start fighting now. Are you going to do more streams in the future? Yeah, and I'm going to try to be more adventurous and not just lay on the floor in my reading room. Um, you know, maybe we can all go for a walk or a hike together or something. But I'd never done it before. And I knew it was simple and I knew it would be, you know, whatever. You just sit and you answer questions. It's no big deal. It would be easier for me if you were all in my reading room with me asking me these questions. That makes me a lot more comfortable than staring at a screen and talking to my reflection. I just think that's a bit bizarre. Do a hike. Yeah, I should. I will. Hey, remember me on Ant-Man? Probably not. Apologize for not opening my door for me. Oh, that's nice. That's always handy when you realize you actually did the right thing or were chivalrous. When are you going to start your motivational speaking tour? Who has made me st starstruck? Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. And I made a complete fool of myself. The first Golden Globe I ever went to, um, I saw her. And I just thought, you know what? I could act cool right now and be above being starstruck and not run over there and act like an idiot. But I kind of feel like in this environment where we're all peers and we're all actors, if somebody ran up to me and said they were a big fan, I would be so flattered and it would mean something to me. And so I just ran up to her and acted like a fan. And... um she was my celebrity crush, so I don't. I don't think she loved it. <laughs> I don't. I didn't feel like it was like, yay, this girl loves me. I felt like it was like, oh, I get this all the time because she's so popular and everyone loves Anne Keaton. Do I love books? I love books. I love, love, love books. Books are uh, my first love. They're my first passion. I don't really watch a lot of TV or movies. And so um, it's kind of weird for me that I'm in them because I don't know a lot about them. But I do love books and I love to write. And that world is where I'm most comfortable, tucked away in my little cabin, writing and reading and cozying up in front of a fire and drinking tea and being alone and having nobody see me. Um, that's, that's my favorite place to be. What am I reading right now? Right now I'm reading... Um, a book called Zen, The Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, I think it's called. It's from, I think, the 1960s or 70s, and it was a huge bestseller back then. It's very philosophical um, and a bit bizarre, but I'm kind of loving it. It's a slog, but it's got some really nice insights. What is my dream role? Somebody asked me that a few scrolls back. Um, I want to play in a Wes Anderson film. I love Wes Anderson and I um, would be honored to be in one of his movies. Um, but he probably doesn't even know who I am. 1967? Is that when the book was made? Is that the one, the one I was just talking about? 1984 was a great book. <laughs> A lot of people are talking about books now. One of my favorite authors is Stefan Zweig. Um, oh, have I seen Damon Lindelof's The Leftovers? Season one killed me. It was amazing. Uh, best season finale I've ever seen in a show. But yeah, Stefan Zweig, he is, he's a fantastic author. I've read you know, tons of his books. I don't know how many books he has in total, but I've tried to collect all of them and read all of them. And I haven't done that with almost any other author. I did that with Ayn Rand. 
she's f amazing. I admire, I admire the shit out of her. Do I have children? I have two children. I have um, two boys, and I love them with all my heart, and I give my life to them. Who doesn't, right? It's our kids. Oh, one just got yoinked up. As in, I was in the middle of reading it because there's a paragraph of hearts. So whoever sent me all that love, thank you. Keely or Legolas? I don't know why I'll answer this question, but I would never answer the Jack Sawyer question. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I always answer this question, and I... Keely, I don't know. I thought they were kind of wonderful together. But I think that, you know, ultimately Keely dies, and I think it's possible that Legolas and Tauriel could go on and have a great life together after that. But, you know, for the duration of the Hobbit films, I was rooting for Keely. Hi. Can you say something in French, please? Qu'est-ce que tu veux que je dise? Uh, ce matin, j'ai écouté Le Petit Prince avec mon petit fils pour qu'il peut entendre le français bon. Pas mon français, parce que mon français, c'est dégueulasse. Quelque chose d'autre en français, parce que je n'ai pas une autre question? Ticklish? Mm, yeah, a little bit. Mostly on my knees. God, if you grab my knees, it'll kill me. Can you never cut or dye my hair because... Of... Oh, I can never cut or dye... No, you can't because you have beautiful long red hair. Do you watch any reality TV? No. No. I really don't like reality TV. Which lost character would fit in Avengers? I feel like my first instinct was to say Saeed. He's a real badass. Uh, hi, hello from Spain. Which role was my favorite? Well, I have different relationships with all of them. So, um, I'm really, really proud to have played Kate in Lost. I really feel like that was an incredible moment in history, television history, to be clear to be a part of. It was like we were at that time where TV was trans, trans transitioning into what it is today, where we have like Game of Thrones and The Leftovers and Boardwalk Empire and Mad Men and you know, just incredible, incredible television. Uh, I had so much fun making The Hobbit, just the experience of making that film, of walking into Middle Earth because Peter Jackson actually build sets that make you feel like you're there and putting on the costume and physically becoming an elf. I mean, that, that whole experience was just incredible. Um, I really like watching Real Steel and I really like watching Ant-Man. Um, they're two films that when I went and saw them in the theater for the first time at the premiere, I came out giddy because I just thought they were wonderful and I was so proud to have been a part of them. Um, I'm, so nervous to see Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm so nervous. It takes me forever to get used to watching myself. So the usually the first time I see one of my movies, I have no subjectivity, I mean objectivity in watching it. I'm I'm totally a ball of nerves and discomfort. And then after a while I, you know, I get there. Hi, Elin. I'm assuming it's French by the spelling. Thank you. I love Real Steel too. Where am I going to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp? Well, I'm assuming and hoping that that I will have um, a screening with my director and you know Paul and Michael and everybody and the producers and the filmmakers um, before it comes out to the general public, so that I can talk about it and know what I'm talking about when we go on tour with it. I don't know how long we're supposed to do this for. What's the general like v rule of thumb? We've been at it for half an hour. It's going good. It's and sorry. I'm. Do you still watch the fan edits of Lost? Not much. Not much. Things have gotten very, very busy. But there was a time when I did. There was a time when I'd never seen a fan edit before. It was a totally brand new thing to me. And I was enchanted by them. And some people really do incredible fan edits. Um, so, yeah, but not so much anymore.
once in a blue moon, I might want to kind of reminisce and I might watch one. Good morning. Where are you? Are you just getting up? Whoever said good morning, Kate Austin. Feels like it's it's getting later and later. I made fan art to you. The best way for me to see your fan art is probably for you to tag me on Instagram. I usually try periodically to go through um, my mentions on Instagram and just check out your fan art and interact with you guys and like some of your your posts and stuff. What's your favorite TV series ever? What's my favorite TV series ever? Ever. I don't know. Recently I watched Glow and that was a riot. I never binge watch and I binge watch that show. It was so easy and fun to get through. Uh, Utamo, but I don't know how to pronounce the EU. I don't know if that's U or L. I don't know. <laughs> Why is the ending of Lost so bad? Um, I love the end. Well, let me rephrase that. I, I think Lost ended exactly how Lost should have ended. And that is that we were on air for six years at the end of every season, I mean, at the end of every episode, leaving you with a profound life question and asking you to go to the water cooler the next day or talk over dinner with your family about how you interpret the answer. What, what do you think about the answer? And... You know, I think if Lost had ended with a great big answer with a red bow on it saying, ta-da, this is the answer to all of life's biggest questions, then it would be akin to a religion more than art. Because I really believe that art is supposed to challenge you to dig deep within yourself and find the answers. And I was really proud that Lost ended with another, well, the number one question in life. Where do we go? What happens? What is all this? And what is life? What is death? And I, I just was proud. I was proud that they had the courage to ask another question, to leave you with a question instead of offering you the answer. Have you got to know the backstories in JJ and Dharma and other hidden backstories like Rachel Blake? and the... No, I haven't. I was not a lost groupie. I uh, loved the first season. Second season, uh, not so much. I loved the third season. By season four, I was lost. <laughs> I was. I gave up. I didn't. I was. I don't know. God, I don't know. That was. That got crazy. And I just don't have that kind of commitment when it comes to TV. I just want to watch the character stories, like the mythology and all that. It's groovy in a book where I feel like I can really, I don't know, absorb myself in it, but not on, not on TV. That wasn't for me. The saddest, saddest death in Lost, Charlie. Hands down. Bald like a baby. I was actually filming the um, facial array for Ant-Man and the Wasp where I do the, um, like when Wasp is in her helmet, they want, they want me to have like my actual face to be able to put in there. And of course they can't film inside of my mask. And so we do this thing called a facial array where um, I do all the acting that happens inside of the mask, but I'm just sitting in front of a bunch of cameras with some really bright lights. And um, I did that. And while I was doing that, I can't remember, oh, I know, I was watching something on the previs for Ant-Man and the Wasp and it triggered a lost memory and it triggered the lost memory of Charlie dying. And I went back, oh, and I YouTubed Charlie's death and I watched it again for the first time in years and uh, God, that music and everything about it was got me choked up again. 
Have I heard Justin Timberlake's new album? If not, very, very good. I, I actually have never heard any of Justin Timberlake's albums, but um, it came up on my search in Instagram recently. Like, you know when you go and you press the little mag magnifying glass to search for something and suddenly all of these other things come up that you might be interested in that Instagram is suggesting for you. Well, um, I think it was his or maybe it was Jessica Biel's post about it came up. And I heard a bit of the album and I thought it sounded really good. And I was like, oh, this might be the first Justin Timberlake album that I check out and buy. Hi, cheers from Chile. Am I gonna appear in Avengers Infinity War? I am, I answered that earlier. I'll be in the fourth. I won't go on and on about it because I don't wanna bore the people who've been with me all along with the same one. But yeah, I'll be in the fourth one, just not for very much time. Can I invite you for supper? Oh, I'd love that. There's kind of nothing more endearing than being invited to someone's house for supper. What am I doing? I'm talking to you. That's it. I'm just laying here talking to you. All right, guys. I'm going to do this for about five more minutes. And then I have a ton of work to get done today because I am... And I'm trying so hard to get the second Squicker Wonkers book out. And I have been failing miserably for the last two years. So um, I got to get at it. But it's been really, really fun talking to you guys. Thank you for all your love and all your questions. I really appreciate it. Will, will I be at the Lost Con in 2020? I don't know. That's a long way in the future. I'd never planned that far ahead. Am I afraid to grow old? What a wonderful question. Um, I am going to answer that as my last question. Um, no, I'm not afraid to grow old. I really, really love and respect my elders a lot. And I really, really need them. I feel like society needs elders. And I think one of the things that's happening right now with this trend towards everybody wanting to be youthful forever is that, you know, that's all fine and dandy for the individuals who get to feel young forever. But what about the youth who need elders, um, who need people who have slowed down enough to really grow in wisdom and have let go of the trappings of youth, of needing to be beautiful and competing on all levels and have settled into a, a place of more contentment and peace and the things that historically have characterized elders in society and has made them so valuable to young people in society. And um, I, I look forward to being that person. I look forward to being the person who is not looking young for my age, but looking beautiful for my age. Um, I look forward to being that person who young people hopefully can look up to and respect and don't feel like they're competing with because I'm done competing because that sort of chapter of my life is over. And um, I don't know, I think there's a beauty in that. And I really hope that as I continue to age, that I always keep that perspective. Um, I really, really, really do think age is beautiful. When I see men and women with their faces covered in lines and wrinkles that are the tapestry of their memories that show the life they've lived and the things they've sacrificed and the joys and the laughter they've had and the pains that they've hurt. And, you know, all of that is written across their face when they allow it to just age and, and show all of that. And uh, my parents are both incredible examples of that. My, my um, in-laws are both incredible examples of that, of people who have aged gracefully and who embrace being my elders and my guides. And um, God, I need them and I love them and I value what they are to me and I value what they are to my children. And... Um, so yeah, I think age is beautiful and no, I'm not afraid of it. Thank you all for your time today. I love you and uh, we'll do it again. This is fun.
I don't know how to turn. Oh, there's end. I'm going to turn it off now. Bye.